Welcome back and now I'm with uh, Banuka Harishchandra who is uh, the founder of Surge. How are you today? Great. How's All right. Going? How's your morning been so far? Terrible. I woke <laughs> up, decided I should try to cut coffee a bit. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I had like 12 cups and it's not the greatest feeling because you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that I'm a slightly unpleasant person without my cup of it, coffee. So I apologize in Okay. Advance. It's fine. It's fine. Completely understand. And how has uh, everything been up to this moment in your career? Weird. Um, Weird. <laughs> and I don't know exactly how you should answer this because everything has been an absolute roller coaster from everything we've done over the last couple of years with Surge and all of the new things that we're starting out. Mm -hmm. So I guess the most accurate answer would actually be weird because I had, I mean, this, none of this was planned out, right? Yes, for sure. Now, starting off, let's give you uh, and everyone a quick introduction about Surge. Okay, so Surge essentially started off very different to what it is right now. Uh, Surge started off as a gaming company. It okay. was me and a couple of our friends. We used to play video games and upload it on YouTube. We weren't particularly good at it, but mm -hmm. we found out that for some reason, people actually enjoyed watching the content that we were creating. A um, couple months later, YouTube shut us down because of a whole host of stuff. And we were struggling to get by and we realized that companies came up to us and said, hey, you guys kind of have YouTube figured out. Would you be interested in making videos for us as a business? Like, okay. Right now, it seems fairly obvious like content creation is a thing. But at the time, this was about six, seven years ago, oh. um, we were in a business where we were generating money based on the number of views and clicks we were getting. When someone said, we'd pay you to actually create that content, it was the whole new thing. And we basically jumped at that opportunity. So Surge over the years grew from that gaming company to helping companies create YouTube videos to social media to now what we are is essentially in mostly a marketing technology company where we build products and do a lot of stuff with data around consumer behavior. Okay, so when exactly did Surge begin? Legally or actually? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Surge technically started, uh, it becomes five years on the 1st of November this oh, year. Oh, okay, wow, okay. So, four and a half-ish. But before it was Surge, we had what was called the, the gaming company. The it was called company. the Gamers Cottage. Okay. And you you know Farmville and all of those yes. really yeah. bad browser games, right? Yeah. So, what we did was we used to do tutorials for Candy Crush Saga level 693 and that okay. was essentially the business. Okay. So that started like three years prior, so I guess seven-ish seven years ago. Okay. It's been a while and, uh, and would you say it's still a lot of up and ups and downs coming into this point? Uh, yes. Uh, what I've realized is the it's always ups and downs, okay. but the, high, the, the, the height of that peak and the dip is also significantly greater and the frequency at which it happens, the intervals get shorter and shorter. Okay. So you have days where you're at the top of the world mm -hmm. and then in the evening you're like, holy shit, my entire life is a disaster, everything's falling apart. All right, so what exactly inspires you to keep going? Um, I don't know. I genuinely enjoy doing this. There's no specific thing, there's no greater cause. Uh, I would love to be like far more, like, I don't know, philosophical to give this answer. I don't know, I mm -hmm. just genuinely enjoy building things. Massive economics buff. Yes. So I just like systems working together and just seeing people things so that we can build bigger and better stuff. Okay, and obviously you said ups and downs, but what has been the most challenging part for you so far? Um, it's It's been an ongoing challenge. If you were to like isolate incidents, it would probably be different over the years. In in the early stages, it's really, you know, trying to get your first customers, trying to figure out how to manage cash flow. Uh, recently, I guess, the most challenging part of, I guess, last year, on the 31st of May, so okay. it's almost been a year now, uh, we actually sold majority of the business to okay. a private investment firm that is across the world. Uh, they have billions of dollars of assets in multiple countries. And we sold, as in for me, it was really weird because Surge was essentially the baby that like, I kind of grew up with yeah. and now you're like, oh, I'm putting it up for adoption. Um, so that was a bit of a weird moment to kind of wrap your head around okay. getting through that. But uh, I think it's been absolutely for the best. The business has grown like tenfold since that point. Um, so yeah, I guess that was the most single challenging part. Uh, recently, um, 
about a month ago, we hired a new CEO into the business okay. from the company. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking a slightly more backseat role in terms of the actual day-to-day -day operations okay. and I'm focusing more on the strategy. So it's just little things like that that you don't really plan for, that you don't know how to figure out figure purely out. because you've never gone through something like that before. That's true. That's amazing. Barco, tell us about uh, what has been the most fun part of your job. Um, I can give you like a really cliche answer, okay. but it is actually the most rewarding thing is getting to meet a ton of people. Right? Mm -hmm. Like if it weren't for what I do, like we wouldn't be having this conversation. I would meet half of the interesting people I meet. Mm -hmm. So for that, I'm ridiculously grateful. Uh, right now, I'm practically on a flight every other week. We are meeting the most amazing people in different parts of the world, tackling incredible problems and being in the space that we are, just being able to be exposed to all of that and seeing how different people try to fix these things kind of gives you hope yeah. around like people and humanity in the, as a whole. A lot of which people don't gen generally see and they just mm -hmm. see the doom and gloom that's usually portrayed. Yeah, and uh, you know, fun comes along with crazy. So what's the craziest thing <laughs> you've done at, oh, at work, at office at least? At office, <laughs> okay, so We've done a lot of stupid stuff at office. Okay. Considering the way Surge is built is majority of us are like a bunch of 20, 30, like early, late 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the things that are, cra the craziest stuff we've done at office are probably illegal. Um, I was actually having a chat with Sajani from Columbo Cooperative uh, the other day is because we were looking at moving out because this team has grown so big. We can't, and we're actually just across the street. Okay. Um, because I wanted to know what are the actual limitations of things you can do because as a co-working space it makes sense, right? Yeah. And we were actually looking at the fact to get some of this space here because they're right next door, you can just switch lanes and you're here. Uh, I just wanted to know what kind of stuff you can get away with because, oh man, it's so much fun. <laughs> I don't know what the, like we have parties, we do all the stuff after work, mm -hmm. everyone gets on video games because at the end of it, these guys are still, most of them are video gamers. Yeah, yeah, so we bond in that way. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so obviously, uh, it's, it's definitely the space that you need. And also, you know, speaking about the founder, since we are here, what, it, what, who exactly would you say, would you pick to have dinner with? Another founder, perhaps. Ah, okay. <laughs> so this is a tricky one. Okay. Because of a multiple things. Um, I have multiple people, but also it depends on the type of dinner. So if it were a situation where I get to pick someone's brain, I guess I'd want to pick someone like Jeff Bezos. Dude is incredibly smart, love him to bits. Mm. Uh, if it's me just chilling with a glass of wine with someone, it'd probably be someone like Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, it would be a really long <laughs> dinner, wouldn't it? <laughs> a really, really cool. It doesn't have to end. It doesn't have to end, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, another thing is, you know, you've come so far in your career. There's a lot of people out there, especially the young ones that are trying to start up their own thing. And sometimes it's difficult, you know, sometimes it's all just words. So what is one thing that you can give, a piece of information that you can give uh, to advise them to carry on with what they want to do? Okay, so can I be slightly long in this answer? Sure, go ahead. So, I mean, first of all, I think, like, I don't know how far I've come because I think we're just really starting. Yeah. 24 years old, yeah. plenty of time left. <laughs> um, I think, uh, so recently we, we started a fund okay. basically to invest in startups and companies around the country and around the world. And one of the things that we tell everyone in terms of how we invest and how we identify uh, what we want to invest in is we need to make sure that these businesses can get traction, right? So mm -hmm. the way we do it is we understand whether is the business actually trying to solve a big problem that affects people's lives? Okay. Is the founders behind it the right people to do that specific job and do we have the resources to allocate to it so if you really look at businesses it's very simple in terms of an investing structure if you draw a two by and i'm stealing this straight off of chaman paul a brilliant dude uh, there's really a two by two matrix there's two types of investments there are investments that are capital heavy okay. there are investments that are capital light and on the top two sides on the other axis you have investments that are obvious and then investments that are non-obvious so if you look at something like obvious is transport, 
as time goes on, transport becomes more and more, like it becomes smaller. Okay. So the, you had chartered jets, you had jets, you have commercial liners, you have cars, now everyone's sharing cars with Uber and now you're essentially, recently companies like Bird are valued at billions of dollars because they're essentially a scooter. Mm -hmm. So essentially what you need to do is make transportation smaller and more affordable. The problem with a business like that, it's obvious, but it is also very capital heavy. You need to invest millions and millions and millions of dollars. And venture excels in capital heavy meets obvious. There is the other component where you have capital heavy meets non-obvious. And mm -hmm. that's done by people like Elon Musk, where you know, let's send someone off to the moon. Okay. Absolutely non-obvious thing to do, but it makes a ton of sense. If yeah. you ask Elon, he's gonna say that it's obvious to you, him because the dude's a genius. Horrible business to be in unless you're actually a genius, right? Then there's the other stuff where there's capital light. Okay. Capital light, obvious would be a business like Surge, mm -hmm. which is essentially a marketing technology company. You can see hundreds of thousands of marketing companies around the world. Anyone can start it, low barrier to entry. The problem with that business, it's very, very um, saturated, competitive, margin light. Mm -hmm. What we invest in is capital light businesses that are non-obvious. Recently, we, we I mean, a couple years ago, we took an equity position in a business called Publisher Rocket. It, right. essentially, it essentially helps businesses understand how much, uh, how much, not businesses, but people understand how many books someone can sell mm -hmm. before they write it by using Amazon Analytics data and just a lot of the market cross-section analysis. But the thing there is people, it's not obvious to do, but it makes a ton of sense for those people that use that tool and it makes millions of dollars and it's really, really high margin it's because yeah. it's not obvious yeah. and it takes $30,000 a year to maintain. So things like that, and essentially, if you can understand that matrix fairly well, mm -hmm. investing becomes really fun, and the, the logic of if it makes sense to invest in, yes. the business usually makes sense. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, that was a slightly <laughs> wow. long, I'm sorry. No, don't worry about it. I mean, this has to be by, by far one of the most <laughs> interesting uh, interviews that I've done, but uh, thank you so much for uh, you know coming by and talking oh, to my us. My pleasure. And I wish you all the very best of luck, and uh, you know, I hope search becomes even more than what you expect it to be. Thank you so much and <laughs> thanks for having me.